CT back with you live here on the Dick CT Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me this Friday evening here on this dark Friday evening here on the East Coast since the sun has gone down or what have you. Thank you so much for joining me once again live here on the Dick CT Lounge. Thank you once again for joining me here. Sorry again for the late start again. So, you know, had to do some other. Uh, stuff around, you know, the house and everything. Lost track of time, and, well, you know, these things happen. Anyway, how are y'all doing today? I know, I know the craziness is going around today. You know, you got the old Monty Tarot, tail and everything else, the craziness. Uh, we got, oh, Lance Storm, not Lance Storm, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> Lance Armstrong. I mean, yeah, I mean the only controversy on Lance Storm thing ever did was, like, he never really did anything controversial. And he, for all the people who love him now, the IWC, he really had a mediocre career. <laughs> I'm just playing. He had a really good career. Um, but anyway, he had this whole Lance uh, Armstrong thing um, um, and everything. Crazy stuff in the world of sports and everything like that. But, well, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Um, I don't really have any much of it. Everyone has said what they need to say on those two subjects. So I'm going to move on to other things, other mundane things in the world of uh, in the world of uh, pro wrestling, for one. Ah, yes, the world of professional wrestling, the interesting world of pro rest, uh, professional wrestling. Uh, let's see. The things that there are so many interesting things to talk about. For example, you have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have the Monday Night Raw. Um, the 20th anniversary of Monday Night Raw, and it sucked. I have to say, I'm sorry, that Raw was terrible. Terrible. It was terrible. And I and I don't like saying that because I want to go into everyone, especially something as historic as 20 years, 20 years of, of, of great uh, te- uh, great uh, television. I mean, memorable moments and and groundbreaking stars. I mean, to me, I I always start watching all way back. In, I mean, when I was a little fellow, you know, when I was a little kid, you know, watching Monday Night Raw. Um, one of my earliest memories was watching, um, you know, Macho Man on commentary. No, in fact, my earliest memory was the one, two, three kid beating Razor Ramon. That was to me really uh, wow. I was like, wow, this this guy, this no, this this young, the one, two, three kid, came out of nowhere and beat him. Beat this guy, this guy, this huge, tall guy, this Razor Ramon guy. I mean, uh, it was just amazing. It was crazy. You know, all the stuff. It was crazy. Uh, anyway. Very good memories. Um, very good to great memories. Uh, the Stone Colds and everything else. Um, uh, but to me, the 20th anniversary of Raw was, in a word, I have to say, bland. And I hate to say that because I love watching Monday Night. I, I love this. I love going on Monday Night Raw uh, to think that you know. It should have some good memories of, and right out the gate, the twenty, the 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 opening of the show was really good, and that was it. I mean, the, the opening of the show was good, and there was some good stuff. The opening of the show, you had Big Show being very comedic and such, and, and Del Rio, ladies and gentlemen, Brother Del Rio, his face was really good. Personally, I I um um, you know, personally, the reason why I think. That Alberto Del Rio got over so quickly is <laughs> um, Ricardo Rodriguez. Dude, just um, dude, honestly, is so connected with the audience, and and people like to cheer for him and what have you. So I think with Alberto Del Rio, I think his face turn is more. I know it's a very abrupt face turn, but dang it, it was really good. And um, 
and, you know, a lot more, a really good face turn, and he's gotten the crowd over with him. And that's good. I want to see the WWE do well. Since, well, since everyone, well, since um, Ray Mysterio is hurt, I mean, not hurt, but, you know, getting up there in years, and Sin Cara, well, it looks like he should have went to FCW. He should have went to Danny Bryan around and went to FCW and stayed there for a year, learning the language and actually getting, you know, used to the WWE style. And honestly, it would have been better for him. It would have worked a lot better because let's be all real here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be real. Um, because as much as people love Daniel Bryan, it, I mean, the, w, uh, the way the WWE style works is a lot different than um, – WWE style um, is a lot different than um, the indie style or something, the indie scene. And honestly, I think Daniel Bryan has shown that he can do a lot better. He's a lot better to me. I, I know. Maybe I'm, you know, not as cool or what have you, but to me, I think Daniel Bryan performs a lot better matches, to me, a lot cleaner and actually more interesting matches in the WWE than, you know, Ring of Honor. But, again, that's my personal opinion of, I'm wrong. You can vote my video down to the negatives of uh, hell, but that's just my opinion. I think Daniel Bryan has performed very well. In fact, probably one of the best things that WWE um, ever had. You know, a lot of people might say that. You know, and um, there's a, I mean, that is a mostly a positive thing. <laughs> um, w, um, no, Daniel Bryan. But anyway, let's get back to the points of, uh, you know, no, uh, getting back to the Monday Night Raw. Um, honestly, the opening segment was really good, but everything else, I mean, sure, Dr. Shelby was good, too, but but most of it, I'm sorry, was just, I don't know, I just felt blasé by it. I was like, it, it felt more of a chore to watch uh, Monday Night Raw than something of enjoyment, and I felt like there was no real legends of course, you have Ric Flair. That's nice, but there was no Sergeant Slaughter. There was no, um, so as no Degeneration X or anyone else out there, since they were so memorable. When they were all, it's just basically a clip show about how great we used to be, and, and just no real, real legends, no nothing. Heck, I would have took Gold Dust, but there was no, there was no one there. It was just, just like a regular episode of Monday Night Raw. And to me, when you have a 20th anniversary, it should be memorable. It should be something grand. And honestly, even though there were good segments, there was nothing really memorable about Raw. I mean, as a whole, it was just bland. And and by the way, the main, the main event of Monday Night Raw, um, I'm going to say, Raw was good. Um, Dolph Ziggler landing everything on John Cena, but yet John Cena basically shrugging it off and still beating him. Again, it shows that the WWE have no real... Um, they don't really care about putting... Um, I don't, do not really care about the future at all. They just, they'll just say, well, Dolph Ziggler had a great match, and that's it, but no. The way they put Dolph Ziggler, uh, Ziggler in that situation, the way they put Dolph Ziggler doing everything to try to get him a victory. And by the way, this cage match, again, which has nothing on the line, nothing, um, there's no real point to it. Someone say, hey, I mean, we'll keep Dolph Ziggler's new friends, Big E and AJ, uh, out of the whole um, John Cena, uh, Dolph Ziggler, we're having that, that, was, uh, that one-on-one match, I'll keep it one-on-one. I can't say that because the last match they had a week ago, Ziggler, even with, with the help of his new friend, uh, Big E Langston, he still won. He still won by, I think it was um, submission or I think it was pinfall. Or no, 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 yes. He beat him with the AA, the attitude adjustment, and still won. And then he still won again with the AA. And, and just, you know, after... Ziggler put him with every little thing he got, and then using Big E Langston again and knocking out Big E, I'm like, you know what? 
I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. And I hate to say this because I love John Cena. I think Cena is probably one of the best guys in this um, in the um, in the WWE. He's he's right up there. He's to me, he's uh, one of the best wrestlers they have. And his um, again, his charity work and all of his positive stuff is something that the W and uh, something that wrestling needs. Heck, if there were more John Cena's in the uh, backstage, my back, uh, yeah, backstage and all the other stuff at you know, charity work. I think pro wrestling would not have a very negative stigma. But this stuff in the ring, this trying to get Cena, I mean, basically marrying bearing Ziggler to a point that he has no real chance of winning against him. And it's like he's he's in the underdog role, but yet still portraying Cena as the underdog. It makes no sense. Heck, John Cena should have stopped being the underdog in 2007. If that, heck, you could have made a case for him to stop being the underdog in 2006 when he was held in the championship for so damn long. But, you know, maybe, but you know, but y'all know what I mean. Just, It just frustrates me when you have him portray the same character from 2007 until now. I mean, there's no real change of him. Nothing. It's almost as like consistency. It's not consistency. It's just bland. It's mediocrity. It, it's just blandness that just keeps... Um, it just keeps Cena just pigeonhole him in that one spot and having him not really change. It's a shame because as good as he is, he is probably to me one of the, and I'll say this right now, he is one of the best, um, uh, rest, uh, probably one of the best guys to ever do it. Uh, to, to do it, but in the end, he just can't even get, I just don't see him getting, I, I don't see him uh, being a very positive, um, you know, not really be, not being positive, but not being that huge um, star that he could be, and that's a shame. But hey, uh, WWE wants to do with that and just bury Ziggler or what have you and make him more relevant. Have fun with that. Anyway, um, I'm going to be taking a small little break here. Don't worry, I will be right back here at Duke CT Lounge. And next up on the docket, I will be talking about... I'm going to be talking about the newest member of Aces and Eights here on the Duke CT Lounge. We'll be right.
Lounge, and the phone number is 724-444-7444. Once again, the number is 724-444-7444, and the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. The call ID is 92417. If you don't want to use your phone, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you have your shoe phone and you can connect. You can download the TalkShoe Live Pro 2.0 app. It is free at TalkShoe.com. You can go and download it. And when you download it, you can set anything up. If you have a microphone, you can connect to me, Duke CT, live, and talk to me. In the Duke CT Lounge, but if you don't want to talk, the chat room, as always, is on lock. You can type in your questions, your uh, everything else, your questions, and all that good stuff. So remember, here on the Duke CT Lounge and um, all the other things. So uh, remember, you can get contact me live or have you. And don't worry, people. <clears throat> if you can't listen live, then you'll always, always look at me Live here on the, you can uh, listen to me live. You can always look at me on YouTube, Blip, Screw Attack, um, the Deck Out of the Forums, RVT, all community videos, or whatever. You. you will see me, on Duke CT. Whenever there's a video sharing site or have you, I will plug and put this thing on it. So don't worry. I, that you will not miss the Duke's Lounge. All right. Okay. Now let's look at what are the most interesting. I do think interesting of um, <clears throat> things of TNA and last day. And I got to say, Impact, for the most part, was great. He had the Two, two uh, guys, ladies and gentlemen, t- uh, two guys who honestly are probably going to be the interesting tag. You got two t- uh, t- two guys in uh, Austin Aries and um, Bobby Roo, Bobby Roo, uh, dude, and taking on the base. I know I'm saying a full killer's term, low stereotypicals. Yeah, well, I'm going to mispronounce it. Well, stereotypicals. And hopefully they're going to take their tag team belts away because, Lord help us, we need some good tag champions that we actually are interesting. Hmm. Um, but to me, the other two guys, another tag team, bad influence, most specifically Christopher Daniels, he's going to face Jeff Hardy. Now, I know there's no real chance of him winning the championships, it would be really nice. It would be really great. But but you know what? This could be something positive. I mean, supposedly Jeff Hardy is leaving the company, which I don't think he's going to leave the company because I don't think the WWE will treat him even closely as good as he is. But, but it could, I mean, and the fact that they're going to, you know, going to um, – UK soon, I would just honestly I'd love to have that. But to me, part of me, part of me just wants to see Chris Daniels win the championship, uh, win the belt, because he deserves I mean, to me, Chris Daniels should have been the world champion a long time ago. But to me, I'm hopeful. I really want... Jeff Hardy to lose that belt and to lose it to Chris Daniels would be just great. But yeah, but you know, but then again, that's the story of Chris Daniels. He should win, but he won't. Uh, it's depressing. It's really depressing. But dang it, it'd be nice to see him do it. It'd be uh, uh, anyway. Um, but you know what? The one thing, the one thing. Oh, hold on. I'm actually replying to someone on Twitter. Uh, Dima Ad Hog. Uh, she says, supposedly, she's watching the movie that broke all the stupid in the world. Uh, she, she, here's my response. 
you must have not watched TNA Wrestling 2009 till 2011. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> oh, but hey, you must have not watched TNA. You must. You must, you, you must not have uh, not watched TNA Wrestling in 2009, 11. But you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to TNA. But um, supposedly something that this could have been going bad, and it still could go on bad. Um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, the newest members of Aces and Eights, Taz, the newest member of Aces and Eights, and I'm going to say this right now. Um, um, I, I, I did not see it coming. I did not see Taz doing joining the ace, the aces and eights, and I was just legitimately shocked. I was like, wow, just, I mean, I was in, sh- I was wow. I was like, what Taz, Taz? Uh, I have no idea why. Taz joined the Aces and H's and and everything else. But hopefully this will be something good because I, I liked it. It was really an interesting turn. And I was like, I thought it was going to be Bully Ray. I thought it was going to be Hogan. I thought, heck, I actually thought it was going to be Brooke. I guarantee you in some drafts at that Brooke or what have you. But honestly, I hope this is actually good and Taz could be anything else. But it, it honestly, it could make sense, and it does make sense. It says that anybody could be in this group. Anybody could be in Aces and H. And I'm hopeful, and I'm really hopeful that this will probably speed up the storyline and maybe speed up the entire storyline the entire time. Um, and here's another interesting look. Uh, it seems that somehow Tommy Dreamer, who was at the uh, at Impact, was also beat up by the Seattle Aces and Aces. Uh, dude needs to stay away from wrestling for a while because very lucky he'll probably be beat up by another generic um, uh, uh, generic NWO clone or what have you. Dude has not had uh, dude is not lucky <laughs> at all this past couple of weeks. I don't know, and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, I still think this is probably one of the best things TNA could do right now. It was probably one of the best things uh, she could that they know they could do right now. It was really nice, and I like to. Hopefully, this will probably really do it. Uh, really and really, um, probably, hopefully, bolsters the aces and eights because I think aces and eights really need. I mean, really need some type of momentum shifter. And hopefully this will continue on moving. And the, overall, a lot more positive than negative. And that's the thing with TNA. Um, is right now, I feel there's a lot more positive than negative. So anyway, yeah, that's going to uh, do it for me here on the Duke CT Mouse. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see you all when I see you all. Later. <laughs>